learning goal of this video is to analyze the character of Rico in a property of the clan. For this video, I've enlisted the help of my mate Steve, who played the role of Rico in 2004. A while ago, Steve. Um, Steve, thanks for being here. Nice to be here, Richie. Is it recording? Yeah, yeah it's recording. All right, this is, this, is all, <laughs> this is all official? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so, Steve, to kick things off, can you describe the character of Rico for us? Uh, well, as I remember, it was about yeah, 13 or 14 years ago. Um, well, in, in, in the play, he's kind of the, he's the leader of the pack, and I guess he's that bloke at school who, you know, he's got his, um, his little sycophant friends that follow him, and a pro probably a couple of good mates that he has. He's, he's the popular kid at school, I guess, or the powerful kid at school. I guess that's the way I, I remember playing him. Is he, is he someone that people really want to be mates with, or is he that frightening kid at school that you're afraid not to, uh, not to be, not to be friends with. But there's something inherently likable about the character. I mean, he's kind of written like that, that Aussie kid, you know, he's a good surfer. He's probably, you know, naturally decent at most things he tries sport wise. And he's, he's, he's that popular kid. And he's, he's that kid where if he's doing something, other kids will probably mindlessly follow along. He, he was that kind of, um, a kid in, in his group, but, um, you know, he, he's kind of written to be the powerful character in that play, but ultimately he turns out to be the biggest coward in the in the play through through what he does. And obviously there are reasons he does what he does in his own mind, um, which if you're the actor playing the role, you have to you have to reconcile yourself with those because it's a horrible thing that happens. Um, but you've got to kind of think, well, why why did he do it? Why would a person do this? And you can disagree with it, but you kind of, if you're going to play that character, you've got to, you've got to justify it in your own head. But yeah, he's he's the powerful character that ends up being the coward. That's that's the way I read it. But when you're playing it, obviously, I didn't think. Yeah, he was being the coward. I saw him at the end. There's a there's a monologue that I used to love doing every every night because he's trying to explain his actions, and you know. As an audience member, you're sitting there going, what the hell? Why did you do this? And th these aren't reasons for it, but he's trying to get the audience to understand why he did it. He, he sees this girl as, you know, it's why not? She was she was asked, she was begging for it. Yep. And all the things that, you know, as an audience, as a, as a, <laughs> as a decent person, hearing that, you yeah, go, well, it's no reason at all. Like, yep. that's the lowest of the low. But I used to love doing that monologue because it was such a, it was such a struggle and it felt so weird trying to own those those ideas but um i've, I've gone off on a tangent no no no, no, no. it's great well i'm just about to go off on one too um because something that i've read that nick enright has written a number of times is that australian men fear women do you think there was any part of that in in rico um yeah well i don't know it's i uh, look that's not something when i when i did this play it was like the second or third play i'd ever done so i I wasn't thinking too deeply. I, I yeah. was, I was, I was learning the lines and trying to work it out as, as I went. But yeah, I guess at that age, blokes like him who have got this built this reputation up around themselves as being the cool dude and you know the 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 pop Mister Popular and you know the one the bloke gets everything he wants. I guess the fear comes that women are the, <laughs> the one group that can reject him and make him look foolish in front of his mates. Yeah. I guess, and that's probably what leads him to do the the horrendous thing that he he does yeah it's that fear of of uh humiliation it's the fear of you know working out that he's not as invincible or as uh you know as as great as he as he thinks he is yeah and losing face in front of his friends and unfortunately for someone that you know grows up in rico's circumstances that's enough to justify him to do something appalling uh which is which is what he does and that's why i you know looking back on it or looking at the play if i was an audience member he goes from being the you know the physically powerful one the one with us with a sway over all his mates to being you know the coward i mean anyone that does that in real life and you, you know i've got friends who are police officers who see this kind of appalling yes. behavior every day and yes. you see the big you know the, the bloke who thinks he's the big tough guy but it, you know in our society especially in australia you know, I always think they're the biggest cowards. Yes, but, but that's the, that's the struggle of playing that that play, and that's these are the conversations that you know people when they're driving home from the theatre probably have. Yes, well, look, it's interesting. Like your language, and I think you'll be delighted to hear it. Is Nick Enright has kind of described 
this illusion of all these powerful males in the yep. play. Um, and that's kind of exactly what you're describing, is this guy who appears to be powerful, but that is just perception. Yep. And when you get underneath it, as you said, a, a, a coward. So what was challenging for you about playing playing the role? Because, look, I'm going to give a disclaimer here. I think Steve is possibly the most respectful person to women that I know. <laughs> so I, I don't know that there's a role actually further from, from you. Yeah, it was, well, it was before I started thinking about this stuff too much. Like, just in the last year, there have been roles that have come up. You know, I was lucky I played a role in... Uh, and an Aussie TV show where I was sort of always doing the, he was a bad guy, always doing, a bad bloke, always doing the, the, the right thing ultimately. So yes. I could connect with that because, uh, you know, everyone likes to think that's who they are and that's the way I was raised. But there have been other things I've been asked to do and I can't do it. I just refuse to do it because being an actor is actually a bloody hard job as it is. Yeah. And I find, and this is probably, there are probably, there are a lot better actors than me that will do anything because it's a challenge, but I have to like, I have to find something likable about the person I'm going to play because you've got to kind of live in that skin for every time they, they, they say rolling up and yeah, until they, they call cut and often a long time after. But I, I find it difficult now, but when I did this play, I guess I connected to, A, it was an opportunity <laughs> to act and I just started. <laughs> then I read, you know, Nick Enright, this is an award-winning play and he's this incredible playwright and yes. as soon as you read it, you want to do it, but... Yeah, it's really difficult because you've got to, like I said, you've got to justify no character thinks he's a bad person or no character thinks she's a bad person. Even the, the murderer who's, even Hitler can justify what what he did, whereas obviously from an audience point of view, you look at him as a disappalling yes. c- c- creature uh, that, that, that these in, in, these horrible things. But well, as, It's as, interesting in the play that you use Hitler because there are all these links, aren't there? Yeah. To, to Hitler and then also to the Europeans' treatment of Aboriginals. Yeah, yeah, these are they're, they're all things that, um, that 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 are sort of thrown in there as as themes and you know all that stuff that I didn't understand when I was doing the play. But um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 hard I, 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 to to justify and to you, you kind of kind of go into your imagination and and think of what this person saw. And I remember going to Stockton Beach. This was seriously like the second or third play I'd done, and I ended up winning a little award for it, yeah. so I was very proud. But um, I and it was good; it was a decent performance when I think back on it. And it was this big moment because I during that um, monologue where he's kind of explaining it, I remember I went to Stockton Beach and that where it had happened. Just kind of probably a bit more to do, but I took photos and I kind of sat there and I tried to imagine what the party would have looked like that night. And, yeah, and I and it kind of went to this dark place and I remember I used to be sitting out the back of the the, the little art the little uh, theatre studio at Newcastle Uni where we did it before that monologue and I'd go back and I'd think of uh, I'd think of um, I'd think of the, the girl I had this whole thought process I'd go through and then every time I'd go out and I was giving that monologue I'd start to cry Yeah. and it was this weird reaction as that character but it's kind of the, the bit where this big this bloke has built himself up to be this big powerful yes. male and king among his friends breaks down into this this little heap and you see that at the end of the day is this scared little yeah. creature whose biggest fear in life is being probably not what he thinks he should be. And he's, you know, admittedly probably had the worst role models in the world to think he could ever do that to a woman, but yes. it was hard to connect to that. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, look, something that I get all my students to do when they're studying any text is to try and think of what the main idea of the actual text is. Uh, so for you as an actor... What, what did you think the, or what do you think is the main idea of a property of the clan that Nick Enright was attempting to convey? Um, I guess it's that, it's just that, yeah, that misguided thought that, that some, you know, that, that as, not just Australian males, I think it's, it's everywhere. It's that misguided thought that something is rightfully yours and I'm going to take it because it's, yes. it's mine. I'm owed it regardless of, um, you know the, the the people around you and the consequences it's going to have forever. Like I think people, it, it's it's a, a, a kind of a look at that idea of how one one set of idea or one 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 action can can devastate a whole group group of people just because of 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 the way you've been the way you've been raised or what you think you're entitled to. And I think it's it it looks at the whole thing. It looks at you know someone having a complete lack of empathy. It looks like it's someone being completely narcissistic or putting, you know, I mean, I don't know. I'm 
horribly inarticulate when it when it comes to these types of things. But I think it, yeah, it's a look at, at at power and and trying to hold power and then um, and then you know losing it again. We were talking about this before. There's no right or wrong answers when it comes to English. Yeah, and when it comes to looking at like this particular play, and it's interesting because my wife studied this play at school and hated it. <laughs> yep. Um, because she felt that there was empathy for these male characters who had done these absolutely terrible things to yep. women. Um, and that was something that she really, really struggled with. Did, did you feel that? Did you think there was a, an empathy towards the, the male characters in A Property of the Clan? Um, no. I, I think... I think the genius of that play is that he he writes he he ma- you can't just have the the, the villains and the, the goodies and the villains to to provoke any kind of thought or any kind of conversation. You've got to see that that people that might seem nice or yep. good or you know they might be they might be a, a bit obnoxious the way Rico is, but ultimately likable. Yes, can do these appalling things. Yes, and I think that's where that's that's what triggers the. The conversation that's what packs the packs the punch um well i think that's the scary thing in, yeah yeah in the play is that we kind of i don't know i do as a male is you kind of recognize yourself a little bit in the characters yeah you recognize people uh, archetypes from you know every every group of blokes has got their their friends and you think gosh yeah it's not dissimilar to the way we the way we are and you know thankfully you know, I think our group at school <laughs> was yeah. a lot more a, a lot different to that but yeah you you, you recognize general traits uh, within the characters you're watching. that It's just, just all the way to make it resonate. Like if yes. you just had a group of people that were despicable and a group of people that were obviously likable, then the play is going to have, you know, you, it's like you're looking at a, uh, a a diagram as opposed to, um, you know, a, a living, breathing yes. thing that you can relate to. Um, but I don't know. I guess I guess the, the, you do look at... The the characters are humanized, I guess. Yes. And which is obviously fundamental to any in any good play. Yeah. And so what was the kind of role for Rico, do you think, in within the play? Um, well, like I said, he's this you know, he's the one you think is gonna be the you know, he's 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 the he's the cool bloke at school. He's he's the leader of the pack and you know, he pushes pushes I think it's Jared, he pushes around, he's kind of he's manipulative and he it's kind of it, it sets him up to be, you know, you know that he's, he's not a massive part of the play. He sort of comes in. He's like a yeah. bit of an impact player, but in the end, it's his his um, his uh, his actions that you know that that the, the drama of the the whole story is based around. So I guess he's this um, he he's he's the cause is the cause for for the conflict, and it's you know his story that kind of I don't know. Yeah, look, I think it's definitely his kind of return to. Black Rock, isn't it? That kind yeah. of kicks everything off. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, again, another thing I get students to do is to try and identify what they think the climax is of the play. So, obviously, we've got all these tensions and conflicts that are building to a point, which yep. is the climax. I mean, for you, what was the, the climax of, of A Property of the Clan? Well, I mean, again, it's something since I, since I read it, but I... Um, I don't know. For me, for me, doing that role, it was when he, it was the scene where he, he, he tries to explain... Why he's done what he what he's done, yeah, and it's this you know it's this attempt to you know it's frightening it's it's his genuine belief that you know he did what he did for this reason and that that should be surely you can you can understand that that's what he's saying surely you can see why I did this yes and that's where you realise how misguided he is and yeah. there there's a whole unfortunately in Australia there is a whole section of well there is a small section of Australian males that would probably go away oh, it's fair enough yes. And if you happen to be standing next to one of those males at the moment, you should give him an uppercut because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it, it's horrendous and it's it's the lowest dog act you can do. But uh, yeah, that, that was him trying to explain it away. Let's move on to the next question, which is, again, a, a question about truth. Um, very briefly, because I know another video, you've already talked about it, but when actors and directors are talking about truth, what are they talking about? And what is the truth for you in the character of Ricker? Okay, well, briefly, you know, you just, the truth of any scene is, the reason the scene was written is uh, is to, I guess, uh, it's to reflect an idea 
of uh, either an interaction between characters or an idea about life or or whatever I guess and you know as a director and as an actor you just want to you, you want that to be real you you want you want uh, what the audience sees to not be two actors on a stage playing out a, a scene you want it to have, have some some resonance that's why you put so much effort into you know trying to really listen and and really really behave you want the behavior to, to be truthful so that people get lost in in what they're seeing as opposed to lost in the mechanics of watching two idiots trying to remember lines <laughs> um and the truth of rico is is this frightened frightened kid who probably had zero male role models in his life that's certainly the way i played him i remember writing this whole backstory you know that his dad had left and you know his mum had done the best she could and rico kind of had to look after his family I'd made it made up all this stuff to sort of make sense of how he got to this point in his life that's what the playwright does too yeah right yeah that's how he starts to play he writes down and creates this very short backstory yep for each of the characters and yep. then goes out and, and writes it yeah well you, you you kind of the the truth of rico is i guess he he he's just frightened he's like he's like the he's like the dog that has been beaten his whole life and you wonder why at you know he, he then turns on someone and, and bites him and has to be put down <laughs> like that's yeah. a really gruesome way to to think of it but yeah i kind of his truth was for all his um for all his you know he's a he's a larrikin he's kind of the the bloke wants to have fun but you know all, everything he does he's drinking he's he's doing all this and it's to try and probably push away the his own in a demons that he he carries around, and sure yeah. enough, he can't he can't do it for long enough, and he has this eruption in this scene where he you know does this this awful thing. But I guess the truth of Rico is he's like a lot of these dangerous blokes that you you probably if you trace it back, you find a a scared little kid yeah. who's trying to uh, put on this this show that they're this big tough person. But yes, um, when when it counts, they end up being. <laughs> end up being the weakest. Yeah, well, it's this idea about what being a man actually is, isn't it? Or this question about what being a man actually is. Yeah. And, uh, look, I think certainly Rico is a confronting kind of thing to go, okay, well, what does it mean to actually be masculine? Yep. And we've got this character who, a lot of these kind of, like, very stereotypical, like, interested in sport. Yep. Strong. Yep. Unemotional. Um, but as you said, at the that's all to kind of disguise this kind of, in a scared little boy. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, well, that, that's the way you make sense of it, anyway. Yeah. Um, look, look, Steve. That's it. You put. You've made two videos with me. That's great. You, you've gone viral. You'll possibly have like five views. That's right. That's <laughs> good. I can. Uh, I'll send you the invoice tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, cheers, uh, mate. Thank you so much. Uh, look, I think the, the the kids and whoever watches the videos will get a lot out of it. So thank you. No worries. Thanks for listening to my. Monotonous voice. <laughs> Sounds like the drone of bagpipes. Brilliant. We've heard them plenty of times. Okay, Steve. Cheers. Thanks, Bruce.